Hello Strongman fam, welcome back to another MST Systems YouTube video. Uh, today we're going to be breaking down probably the most requested video I've ever got to be honest with you. There's so many comments in the last video. By the way, thanks guys for all the support on the last video with the breakdown of uh, Lissa's performance. I really appreciate it, it means a lot. Um, everybody in that video was requesting to do Novikov's dumbbell. So I thought to myself, why not? His, his dumbbell is absolutely class. It's been flying at the moment. His training lifts, I think he hit like 140, 150 kilos or something in training. Absolutely class. His technique's spot on as well. So I thought we'd break down his performance from the um, Rogue Invitational uh, as well. Uh, before we get into that, I've got to do the old business plug. So make sure you go to mstsystems.co.uk. If you're interested in getting into the sport, make sure you download the free eight week strongman ebook. Use the gym locator to find a local strongman gym. Also, we do have MST, but which is our budget entry program. So if you're looking for something for off season, guys, we're into winter off season now. If you want something cheap, affordable and awesome to run for off season get mst bot uh, and also depending on when this video goes out um we are changing the website to offer block booking coaching so please check out the site if you're looking at getting a custom built program you can select your coach you can select your package and build everything perfectly for you anyhow into the video so the dumbbell ladder is 253 pounds, 274, 280, 290, 300 pounds. So it's a real heavy dumbbell ladder and it is the Sia dumbbells, which are like, um, they're, they're, they're not the typical monster dumbbell style. They're replicas of the, well, the Sia dumbbell. Um, they're a little bit shorter, which means that proper technique would be that your, your hand has to get closer to your shoulder. On a monster dumbbell, you can kind of be out a little bit. On a Sia dumbbell, it needs to be in. So. We'll watch um, Novikov's rack position and kind of look at that. So we'll start this off. You watch some athletes and they'll either make it look easy or it doesn't go at all. It's all about timing, having everything... Can't really see the first dumbbell, guys, because it's... Uh, I'm excited to see how Novikov... Quite a distance away. Game on this event. So let's pause on this rack position. So as you can see here, guys, we've got this pause now. So with the dumbbell position, You'll notice that in this rack position here, this is absolutely perfect. So his elbow is facing in the same direction as the um, end of the dumbbell. So when you rack a dumbbell, I actually teach the two o'clock cue. So if, if this is 12 o'clock that I'm facing here, guys, this is one o'clock, this is two o'clock. So I teach the elbow to be facing two o'clock not quite three o'clock, which is all the way over this way, completely open. If you look at Novikov's position there, he's kind of in between, so it's not quite two o'clock, it's not quite three o'clock, it's kind of like there. So he's a little bit further out than what my usual coaching cue is, but coaching cues are only a guide. And obviously this position is real strong for him. So he's in this position here with the dumbbell facing the same direction as the elbow. That's the most important thing to take away from an efficient rack position, guys, is whether your elbow's facing this way or this way, or this way, it has to be in the same direction as the dumbbell. The reason for that is when you dip, that end of the dumbbell that's furthest away from your body, that's gonna try and drop, okay? So you need to have a little bit of contact with that on your elbow. If your elbow's slightly in front, then the dumbbell can roll off. If your elbow's slightly behind, it'll roll forward. So this rack position here is real optimal. Um, his opposite arm, is, is pulled out for, for just balance and a little bit of proprioception, a little bit of awareness of where he's at. You'll notice that his torso isn't perfectly vertical either. He's slightly lent to the opposite side. The reason for that is you want the center of the dumbbell to come between the middle of your legs, so in the middle of your hips. That way the center of gravity is slap bang in the middle. So we'll play this a little further and we'll pause it during his dip position. So as he dips here, guys, the dumbbell hasn't moved. That's the number one mistake people make on dumbbell is the dumbbell moves. So in this dip position here, his knees are pointing out, um, his torso angle has remained the same. He has dipped uh, basically in a straight line, even but it's, it's not a straight line really, but because you're lent to the side, you're kind of dipping in a straight line, but keeping that, that lean to the, the opposite side, if that makes sense. So when I say vertical dip, what I mean is the position that he's set in, he's dipped straight down and he hasn't, he hasn't 
further length to the left or to the right or anything, it's not moved. So that means that the dumbbell is gonna be able to go straight up. Now this is the part of the dumbbell now when it hits its extension. This is the part that's the most interesting to watch because this is where a lot of people go wrong on the dumbbell. And if you go back and watch the video I did on Lissis, you'll, you'll notice that I pointed this out on Brian Shaw that he was extending. So as, as his knees extended and he locked his quad, um, he hits that triple extension and the dumbbell goes up, but his legs stay straight and his body stays straight. So what that means is he has to press out the dumbbell. Now if you watch Novikov, he actually dips underneath it and doesn't really press it out. So boom, if we look at his foot position there, so now he's locked out overhead. His torso angle is very similar to what it was previously and his legs are in a very similar position to the dip. Uh, this is what you would call in weightlifting a power jerk or sometimes referred to in Strongman as a double dip because basically you're repeating the same mechanics on the dip and drive uh, when you actually catch the dumbbell. So now that he's caught this dumbbell, his arms locked out completely straight overhead and now instead of his tricep having to press out this last part, all he has to do is stand up for his legs which are obviously much stronger than the triceps. So this is the best way to do the dumbbell. So if we replay this back, guys, and watch it in, in full speed. Boom. All leg drive. Awesome. And then into this next dumbbell. So this one's even heavier. This one's 280 pounds, this one. So as he cleans this, you'll notice the rack position is pretty much identical. The foot stance is pretty much identical. The lean to the opposite side, identical to the other dumbbell. Arms still out. Let's watch the dip. So the dip is deep, it's maintaining that torso angle, his knees are out, uh, he's in a great position, and as he extends, he lands in that double dip. Now because, because this got heavier now, guys, what he's done is he's actually kind of starfished a little bit, which is totally fine. When I coach my guys, I say to them, get under the dumbbell. I don't care how you do it. I don't care if your feet go this way, if they go that way, if they go this way, if, if you lean a bit extra. The whole goal is to just get under the dumbbell. So that's all Novikov is thinking about. And usually with someone who's good at dumbbell, as the weight goes up, the position that the legs land in will just differ every single time. Um, it just goes where it goes. It, that's what comes with practice. So that's, that's what we call proprioception. So awareness uh, of what's going on around you and with your body. So being able to basically utilize um, skill to get under the dumbbell and kind of act in the moment if that makes sense so as he hits that extension he's feeling where that dumbbell's going he understands how far he's got to dip down to get under it perhaps he didn't have the mobility in the initial stance he was in so his body's naturally like moving his feet into some direction to get under it so i always say to people don't be too critical about where your feet land if you're practicing this just just focus on getting under the dumbbell so we're going to his heaviest one now guys and we'll see this one because he actually presses the last dumbbell and this is interesting because he actually fails his first clean because he makes a bit of a mistake with his technique so when he does this clean here you'll notice he, I think he pulled it a little I've paused it I think he pulled it a little too close into his hip there I think he actually needed to swing it back a little more because when you get a heavy dumbbell you want to um, swing it back underneath your hip almost like for Pretty much the same uh, position as like a sandbag throw, to be honest, guys. Uh, so he actually misses this clean, doesn't get quite enough power there. And then he makes the sensible decision to reset instead of grind it out. That's something good to take away as well. He's clever. He knows that he that was stuck on his, his, his belly. He could have bounced that up and got it to his shoulder if he wanted to. But he knows that it'd probably take too much energy to, uh, to get it there. He probably wouldn't have got the press. So he's dropped it and he's reset. And on this one... So this one, as you can see now, look at the angle of the dumbbell in the same position. Before, the dumbbell was angled the other way. The top part of the dumbbell was the highest up, whereas now it's facing down, his shoulders are over the dumbbell, much more powerful position. So we'll move on to this 300 pound press now. So dip is exactly the same, guys. Same torso angle, same elbow position, he's facing that. You Use that as a guide, guys. 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock. You, you want to be roughly 2 o'clock. Again, you can be a little bit further in, some people a bit further out, it's going to depend on your anthropometrics. So now, as he 
extends and catches this dumbbell, he dips real aggressive underneath this because obviously the heavier the dumbbell gets, the less distance upwards you're able to push it. So it's perfect drive and then boom. Look how far he's lent to the opposite side, guys. And this is what I was mentioning about Lissis when uh, Lissis did the dumbbell. This is a re I love this technique because this is like the old school um, circus strongman style bent press with a dumbbell. If you ever watched the circus strongman, like, what's his bloody name? Um, is it just Lewis Sear? <laughs> I don't even know. The old school strongman, he'd clean it up and he'd press it and lean to the side. This is implementing that same technique but with a little bit of leg drive. And then as he gets it, he locks out first. That's important to notice. He, if he'd have stayed here and then tried to, to stand up with a bent arm, he would, have, he would have lost that rep. So he stays there braced, locks out first, and then comes through. Uh, look, look how far to the side he is, guys. Again, this is just from practice, from repetition, and from trusting your own instincts. Because on a dumbbell, you just need to get under it after you hit that extension. Whether your feet, look, his feet are in a different place as well. Um, I mean, he's actually in a pretty bad position here, to be fair. His right leg is internally rotated. Um, you know, he, he's lent right to the side, but, but the guy's well drilled in this position, so he's, he's relatively safe. Uh, and it's not like, he goes, it's not like he goes in this specific position all the time. So yeah, realistically, guys, the thing to note on, um, a Novikov's dumbbell is, is not just how stable and strong his rack position is, but it's to do with how he actually transitions from that extension upwards. So he's throwing that dumbbell to here. Now, most people can throw the dumbbell here and then they just can't press it out. Like Shaw, for example, he was throwing it and then triceps. You can, you can go watch Shaw's video. You can physically see the transition every time. It's dip, drive, press. Dip, drive, press. Novikov's, you can't see the transition, guys. He's just under it. Let's go back to a lighter one so we can see. So this is 290, guys. So look how fluid he is. You can't really notice the, the way he presses. You see what I mean? You can't see where he presses. He's just chucking it, and then he's boom, under it and through. So big takeaway from Novikov's dumbbell, guys, is make sure you attain a strong, stable rack position so that when you dip, the dumbbell does not move. When you dip, make sure your knees track out, make sure your torso angle stays the same and it goes perfectly straight down. Um, make sure you lean a little bit to the side, guys, and rack, because that puts the dumbbell from, if it's in your right arm and you stand quite vertical, all the weight is gonna be through your right foot. As soon as you just take a little bit of a lean to the opposite side, suddenly that weight goes into the middle and then you're able to generate so much force. That's one of the best cues to learn on dumbbell guys, is just lean a little bit to the opposite side. So if you're right-handed, you're just gonna like, put your arm out and just lean to the left a little bit. And a good way to practice this guys, actually, is to pause the dip. So clean your dumbbell, a dip and pause. And if it feels like there's loads of pressure on the same leg as to the arm the dumbbell's in, then just move yourself a little bit and then make sure there's an even spread of force through both feet. Think about your feet, that's the good, the good thing to think about, how much force is through both feet. You know, make sure you're controlling the arch of your foot, make sure you can feel where your power transfer is coming from. Because there's one cue that you should always remember, guys, um, is that you always have to apply force into the floor. No matter what lift you're doing, you have to you know, apply force into the floor. So if you're ever worried about mechanics and stuff, think about your feet and feel how much force you're putting through each foot. And if, you, if you're slightly out of line, you'll notice that there'll be one foot that'll be like, you know, putting more, more pressure on a more low through than the other. So, so think about that. Um, make sure with your dip that it's deep, okay? On dumbbell, you can have a deep, powerful dip. Look at Brian Shaw's dip that I mentioned. It may be due to his injury, but it was too short. There was too much knee flexion. It was just knees going forward. There wasn't any, there wasn't any opening up at the hip. There wasn't any ass going back and loading that hip. Novikov's loading that hip. And then the final takeaway is get some balls and jump under that dumbbell. No press outs. Extend as powerful as you can. And when that dumbbell's here, do what comes natural to you. Whether it be a fucking split jerk, whether it's a power jerk, whether your feet just go starfishy, whether you lean to the side, circus strongman style, find something that gels with you and, and you can just do naturally, and then you'll be able to put a big dumbbell over your head. Um, hope that helped. Hope you're able to see some of the positions Novikov is using and applying to your own training. 
Um, remember to check out the website guys and thanks for all the support, really appreciate it. Um, having a good time doing the YouTube videos, having some good feedback. So like, like I say guys, thanks for the support. If you could like the video and comment, that's a big help. And if you need anything, remember go to the MST Systems website. See you next time.